Imagine working on a large and complex project. What do you picture? It might be a large team working on one large code base. It might be one or two project managers trying to deal with this large team and uh, this large scope and complexity of this project. It might be a large monolithic or big ball of mud code base where making one change requires coordinating with so many people and you're scared to make the one change because it might break something in the totally unrelated part of the application. That's how big and complex it is. Is that what you're picturing? Now, imagine working on a much smaller project where you have a very small set of requirements, maybe five to 10 user stories or requirements. And uh, it can have a very small code base, maybe 10 to 15 files of code. You can throw it away and rewrite it in a couple days or within a week if you want to, if you don't like how it's set up. You own the entire code base and you can fit almost the entirety of it in your head. Which one seems simpler to you? The large complex code base with a large team or with a small project that you're working solo with a small set of requirements? The goal of microservices is to convert this large and complex project into a bunch of small and independent pieces of projects that can be worked on independently by completely independent teams so that you don't have the first scenario where there's a large team and a large code base, but instead you have a bunch of smaller teams, maybe even solo teams working on much smaller projects and much simpler projects, completely independent of each other. Two key pillars of microservices architecture is that the services should be small and they should be independent. What does independence really mean in terms of software services? Two things. The first is that they're loosely coupled, which means a change in one service should almost never require a change in another service. The second is independently deployable. You should be able to deploy and operate any service without needing any other service to also be deployed and functional. These are the two key things that you need to do to make microservices independent. But what about small? A microservices should be small enough where you can throw it away and rewrite it, like I mentioned earlier, so that you don't gather a lot of technical debt. You can at any point dislike how it's written and completely rewrite it without affecting anything else in your entire system. This way of architecting software allows you to take a large and complex problem and break it down into much smaller solutions that can each be developed uh, tested, run, and managed independent of each other. Stay tuned for more videos on how you should make microservices or when you should make microservices.